Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful spring day. I think we need to soak in the sunshine whenever we can. It's a reminder of new life and hope and all those good things so that when it gets cooler again, we'll know, oh, but not forever. <laughs> Warmth is coming. This morning, instead of our usual confession and forgiveness, we're going to be doing Thanksgiving for baptism since we are in the season of Easter. We celebrate the gifts that God has given us. So I'm going to ask you to turn to that in our bulletins. Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia! Excellent. I can hear you. <laughs> Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth. Like, like rains, rains to our, our thirsting earth, earth like, like streams that revive our souls, like, like cups of cool water, water shared, shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make, Make us, us one, one, risen Christ. Christ. Cleanse Christ. our hearts. Shower us, us with life. life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We're going to be singing the first four verses of Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing.
Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you, you adopt, adopt us, us to be your children. children. Fill, Fill us, us with your, your words of life, that, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. can never have too many microphones. <laughs> well, our first reading comes from Acts chapter 3. After healing a man unable to walk, Peter preaches to the people, describing how God's promises to Israel had been fulfilled in Jesus. Through the proclamation of Christ's death and resurrection, God is offering them forgiveness and restoration in Jesus' name. Peter addressed the people you Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect help, health in the presence of you all. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that the Messiah was to suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Here ends the reading. Please join me in reading responsibly from Psalm 4. Answer me when I call, O God, the defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you love illusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, who will show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me rest secure. Here ends the psalm. Our second reading comes from the first letter of John, the third chapter. Here God has loved us in order to make us children of God. Though we do not yet know the full details of our future existence, we trust that God will reveal it just as God revealed Jesus to take away our sins. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has yet to be revealed. We do know that we do know is that what we do know is this: when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he is revealed was revealed to take away sins. And in him there was no sin. No one who abides in him sins, and no one who sins has either seen him or known him. 
Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Here ends the reading. Please join me, or please join in the gospel acclamation found on page 83 of the LBW. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. In this account of an appearance after his resurrection, Jesus opens the minds of the disciples to understand him as Messiah. Jesus convinces them that he has been raised and sends them on a mission to proclaim the message of repentance and forgiveness. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet and see that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still among you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. So our Gospel today takes place on the same Sunday that Jesus rose from the dead. In Luke's Gospel, the women went and found the empty tomb. And then later that day, Two disciples decide to walk to Emmaus and meet a stranger. And that stranger talks to them about all the events that had taken place in Jerusalem over the past few days. And that stranger opens up to the disciples what it means to be the Messiah as found in scriptures, Moses, and the prophets. And then they come to a place at the end of the day where they're going to stop and eat. And they invite this stranger to come in with them. And as the stranger blesses the bread and breaks it in front of them, they recognize the stranger to be Jesus. And then he disappears. Immediately, these two disciples get up and they run the seven miles back to Jerusalem and tell the other disciples what they have seen. And as they finish telling these disciples what they have seen, Jesus appears in their presence, saying, Peace be with you. And we find the disciples are startled and terrified, thinking they are seeing a ghost. And I can't imagine what it would have been like for them. Here they are, they've seen Jesus crucified. They have the women come back in the morning and tell them that the tomb is empty. Peter and the other disciples go and look and see that the tomb really is empty. And now they have these two other disciples come out of breath, They're probably assuming they're delusional because they've just run seven miles and are speaking so fast it's hard to understand. And then suddenly in their midst, Jesus stands there and tells them words that they would have been familiar with having heard it many times over the past few years. Peace be with you. And they're terrified. They think they're seeing a ghost. And then Jesus asks, why are you frightened? Why do your hearts doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. See, I have flesh and blood. A ghost does not have that. And then they start to believe or have joy while they're still disbelieving, still in wonder. I mean, it is an amazing story. 
even seeing Jesus in their midst, it's still hard to grasp what it means for them. And then to make it even more interesting, Jesus says, do you have anything to eat? Mm -hmm. Always interesting to hear. In the midst of the resurrection, in the midst of telling the story, Jesus stops and says, do you have anything to eat? I suppose we can assume he hasn't eaten for three days. He's a little hungry. The other part of the story is, have you ever seen a ghost eat? I know that's one of the fun parts about having young kids, is I get to watch Scooby-Doo and the Boo Brothers, where Scooby-Doo gets to meet these ghosts, and the ghosts love to raid the refrigerator. They go to the refrigerator, they grab all the food, put it in their mouths, and it falls straight to the floor. Here, Jesus takes a piece of broiled fish, puts it in his mouth, Choose it and eats it, just as he had done so many times in their presence, showing them that he is truly there. He is truly risen. He is flesh and blood, not a ghost, not a spirit, not a figment of his their imagination or hopes, but he is truly there as the risen Lord. And then just as he did for those two disciples on the road to Emmaus, he starts telling them everything written about the Messiah found in the words of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. All the words that it had to be fulfilled. And he opens their hearts and their minds so that they can understand scripture. And then he says to them, thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem, and you are witnesses to these things. Now that is probably the scariest part of this passage. You are witnesses to these things. Yeah. It's part of the reason we do, slide this over so I don't break it, remembrance of baptism. Okay, I'm going to have to get a bigger handful. There, probably hear that better. In, wa in the waters of baptism, we are joined to Jesus' death and resurrection. We are joined with Jesus and all the other disciples, all the other witnesses, to be able to start here, in this place, to go and proclaim the message of repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus. We are called to be witnesses to these things. I think about the pressure of that, the expectation. We are witnesses to the resurrection. We are witnesses to the reality of repentance and true forgiveness of sins. I think about how amazing it is. Every time you tell somebody on Saturday night you have to get up early morning to morning to go to church on Sunday, you are a witness. Every time people see you get into your car to come to church, you are a witness. And on Facebook, every time you like and share this service, you are a witness. Or any of the other wonderful posts that Erica shares. You are a witness. Whenever you go into the dealership, whenever you go into the grocery store or the post office, you are a witness. I have to admit, I like to tell people I don't like to have stickers on the back of my car or a fish logo that rec points me out as a uh, Christian because I wonder what it means when I drive to the Twin Cities and I accidentally cut somebody off. And they wonder, is that a witness? But even in our driving, we are witnesses. I think, the po think of the power of that. In everything we do, we are witnesses. We are proclaiming the risen Christ and the fact that there is repentance and forgiveness of sins for everyone. Not just as individuals, but also as a group of, of sorry, as a congregation, as a group gathered here. I think about that's part of the reason we go down to Sioux Falls on a regular basis to worship at St. Dismas, to be able to proclaim to the prisoners that Jesus rose and died for them to have repentance and forgiveness of sin. 
It's the reason we go to the banquet, to be able to proclaim to the world that Jesus rose and died for the repentance and forgiveness of sins. It's the reason usually during our um, vacation Bible school, we do food for kids, so that we can send food both locally and around the world to proclaim Jesus Christ and the repentance and forgiveness of sins. At Christmas time, we have the ornaments on the tree, again, to spread food and health throughout the world to proclaim that Christ is risen and there's repentance and forgiveness of sins. We do this as a congregation. We do this as a people of God because we are witnesses. We are joined with those disciples as we are joined together in the waters of baptism. Yeah, I can always be mean. <laughs> you know, we are witnesses. And now I want to, yeah, I have a trouble sometimes with transitions. You can ask my wife about that. <laughs> but one of the things that pastors have been getting together this week for our tech studies and our conference meetings, and one of the things we're trying to figure out how to do, what to do, is how do we speak about race? How do we speak about what's happening in the Twin Cities and in Chicago and around this country and the world? Because that's another place where we witness as Paul reminds us that we are neither Greek nor Jew, male or female, freed or slave. We are no longer white or black. We are no longer country or city. We're no longer rich or poor. We are all witnesses together, joined together in baptism as children of God. And this is one of the struggles that the ELCA, particularly the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, has as we keep trying, one of our goals is to strive to be more inviting for people of color. And yet, even after, since, yeah, we started in 1987, so I can't do the math, 30 some years, we are still the whitest congregation in the United States. And we're still trying to figure out how do we speak, how do we witness to this resurrection, this repentance and forgiveness in this world that gets to be so divided. One of the things we do is we have social statements. These are documents that are written up by educators and lay people, pastors and musicians, to try to find ways to educate ourselves, to talk about controversial issues. And one of them is freed in Christ, race, ethnicity, and culture. Now these social statements aren't meant to be documents where we say you have to believe this, but these are documents where we can get together and think about what does the Bible say about this? What does our theology say about it? When we read, we read the early writings of Martin Luther, what does it say about it? What does science say about it? So we have a place to have a discussion to start to think about how do we witness to this true repentance and forgiveness of sins, even cultural ones. So I left a few copies in the front entryway if anybody would like to read through it. But we keep striving to be witnesses knowing that sin and brokenness is still here, even after the resurrection. But Jesus promises us that there is still repentance and forgiveness of sin in his name. And because we are baptized into that promise, we become the witnesses to tell the world that our Christ, our Messiah, our Lord has risen from the dead. And in his name, we have forgiveness. In this we stand. Amen. And now we'll continue with the hymn of the day, which is in the blue hymnal, hymn 756, Lord, you give the Great Commission, verses 1, 4, and 5.
his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Living God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O oh God. Creating God like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Hear us, O oh God. And your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness. We pray especially for Linda and Roger, for Doug and Cheryl, for Helen and Lorelei, Ricky and Dawn and Terry, for Connie and Cheryl, Arlen and Eileen, Faye, Steve and Gary, for Ricky, Cindy and Dan, Darlene, Brody, Mary, Brad and Riley. And Lord, we lift up to you those who are in grief, for Evelyn Houston at the death of her daughter, for Roseanne Wanson Reed at the death of her sister Laura, and for all who have cared for Joyce Aiden. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that in the, we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives among us. Assure us of the peace you have promised that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this traditional time of offering, we offer our thanks up to our good and gracious God for all the ways that he has blessed us. And we are also grateful for all the ways that many have come together to support the ministries of this congregation. And we pray that God will continue to guide us in ways to be witnesses to his word. As always, the address for sending your offering is in the bulletin. And there is a plate right outside um, as you leave. For announcements, 
Uh, the endowment committee meets after worship today, upstairs now, uh, downstairs, all right. And we'll be having a celebration of Tanya Herder Davis's life on Saturday, May 1st. One o'clock, we'll have a short service of remembrance. And then I love this, that will be followed by pizza and birthday cake, per Tanya's request. That's awesome. They do ask for RSVP, how much pizza should be ordered? They need to know. So please do let them know, um, RSVP on Facebook so that they have a sense of how much to get. Our calendar this week, tomorrow is the newsletter deadline, and then our when, rest of our schedule is pretty much um, as usual, except Wednesday morning at our usual Bible study at nine in the morning, that is gonna be uh, streamed on Facebook Live, but also we can have it in person. So if anybody is available, nine o'clock, Wednesday morning, come on over to English and take part in our Bible study with distance and masks. Other than that, we have our um, usual schedule of confirmation, and then Sunday, our worship will be at 8.30 here. Anything else? Mission of the month. Mission of the month. Um, to help out the elementary school library, helping fund the One School, One Book program. And as a family who very much appreciates our library, uh, we want to encourage you to help support um, the school library and support our kids in their reading. Okay, are you uh, ready to receive a blessing? Yes. All right. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We're going to sing, Lord Be Glorified. Gone to Bible Camp, you know this song. <laughs> <laughs> 